Well, welcome back to the channel. And wel <laughs> welcome to another new motorbike. I think Mrs. Locals formed the view that my midlife crisis has probably gone far enough now. So, <laughs> so this might be the last motorbike that I buy for a while. I hope you can hear me okay. I've bought a new dead cat for the microphone so I can use my open face helmet. So I'm hoping you can hear me clearly through the wind. But uh, yeah, got another new bike and uh, I thought I'd introduce you to it. If you've been following the channel, you know over the last year I've sort of been slowly filling my garage up with motorbikes. So obviously I've got the 1250 GS which is my everyday motorbike. Described it as a Swiss Army motorbike, that it sort of does everything for me. And if you're only going to have one motorbike, that's probably the perfect motorbike. But then, as you know, my dad died last year and I bought a bit of a tribute to my dad. I bought the old 1938 AJS, which has been garaged over the winter. Got a lovely custom cover for it. And that'll be coming out in the spring for some nice rides around the lanes. Might even do some vintage motorbike club runs on that, if I get the chance. And then in August, I bought myself the Fireblade, the 954 Fireblade. Which I will be riding over the summer. Not a lot, I don't want to put huge miles on it because it's a very low mileage, real minter that one. But that'll be getting ridden over the summer as well. Again, that's been parked up over the over the winter, garaged. Will be coming out once the weather starts getting a bit warmer and salts off the road. But there was another gap in my garage. There was another little space. And that space, in my view, was definitely big enough to get another motorbike in. Maybe not another GS or something large. But there was room for another little motorbike. And so I bought one, and here it is. And this is a 1985 Honda C90 Super Cub. Super Cub, not just a Cub. <laughs> now, if like me, you worked in a factory in the 1980s, there have been at least 30 of these on the car park, even at a small factory. This is the biggest selling motor vehicle of all time. A few years ago, Honda made the 100 millionth Super Cub, and they're still making them. So there's well in excess of 100 million of these come off the production line in Japan. I wouldn't suggest they're all still out there. <laughs> but if you travel anywhere in the Far East, Thailand, Singapore, Korea, these are everywhere. This is normal family transport. You'll see these blotting around with three or four people on them. They are notoriously simple, they're a very simple piece of engineering, but a very reliable piece of engineering as well, designed by Mr. Honda, back in the 19, mid to late 1950s I think, to be cheap and cheerful transport, and that's what it is. So back in the 80s when I was an apprentice, a lot of the guys used to come to work on one of these because it was just cheap and cheerful and reliable, it wouldn't let you down. And extremely economical on fuel as well. Get it going. So let's um let's back up somewhere, let's have a look around it. I'll show you around behind the cup. Show you my Honda Cub. Because mine's different from all the others. 
and then we'll take it for a bit of a ride and I'll give you my I'll give you my riding impressions so here it is glinting in the sun this isn't just any Honda C90 this is my Honda C90 and there it is 85 on a B plate It's done, let's have a look. So, just gone over 28,300 miles. So, it's been well used in its lifetime. Not quite a historic vehicle yet. Another three years, and then I'll be able to register it for uh, historic vehicle status and get free tax on it. And that will save me the grand sum of £21 a year. But actually mechanically it's good the one thing to look out for on these more than anything else is rust especially around here and you can see it's had a little bit of bubbling up there but there's been that's been repaired and painted over um like i say it belonged to my mate andy's dad for quite a few years and between them a few years ago they stripped it down and gave it a bit of a rattle can paint job but actually it's not a bad job it's not quite the right red the correct red is a more of metallic slightly darker red but I think it looks all right, this. Certainly no plans to do any repainting or anything like that on it. 85cc, might be 86. Correct me if I'm wrong. Just hidden under there, 85cc four-stroke single engine. On this model, it's kick-start. I think the year after this, they came with electric start. Um, but it's not exactly difficult to kick over. Chain drive. So I'll talk you through the controls. Nothing at all on the left hand here. No brake and no clutch. And it's the clutch I keep going for on this. Um, but here we've got, this is the choke. Only really need it when it's cold. Horns there. Um, this is no headlights, parking lights or side lights if you like. And headlights, and when the headlights are on, this is dip beam and main beam. The headlight itself is a little bit little bit poxy but that's all right i don't intend on riding at night very much um on the right hand bar we've got um normal throttle indicators right and left and this is the front brake on the comprehensive dashboard we've got neutral indicator a little flashing light for the indicators got a speedo if you look at the green line here carefully you can see it's got one two and three so effectively that's the sort of rev range for the different gears first second and third it's got a fuel gauge um, which is really pessimistic i've done about five miles since i filled it up it's already dropped off full but actually it'll go a long way on a tank full of fuel this um, and that's it for your dashboard uh, down here on this side of the engine is the gearbox so we tap it forward to change up through the gears, we tap it back to go down through the gears. Um, I think it's designed so you can do it with your heel, but that doesn't work with feet my size. So I tend to just move my foot back and tap it down and tap it forward when I'm changing up through the gears. It has got pillion footrests as well and a pillion seat, but I dread to think what it's like with a pillion on it. I can't imagine we get up many hills. On this side, so we've got the Kickstarter it'll only start in neutral um, so that, that can just get a bit faffy sometimes when you've come to a stop and you think you're in neutral and you're not I'm sure some get used to that and we've got the rear brake pedal and then if you pull this little lever back here under the seat there's the fuel tank and this one's got a nice luggage rack on it as well which fits my camera bag on really nicely with a couple of bungees we've put New tyre on it yesterday, Continental, it's the right size. Put a new front tyre on it for the MOT. And it passed with no advisories. And the only other thing I'm going to do uh, immediately is change these shock absorbers because they're a little bit soft for a gentleman of my stature. <laughs> so we'll just firm those up a little bit. It is a little bit bouncy at the moment when the speeds pick up. So there you go. That is my Honda C90 tell me what you think of her if you've got one if you've got any tips for running these let me know 
but let's get it back out on the road let me give you my riding impressions so that's a quick look round my Honda Cub 90 what's it like to ride well first of all I think the first thing that strikes you especially if you used to ride in a GS is that this thing is light as a feather uh, it doesn't have a traditional frame it has a uh, sort of pressed steel almost a monocoque construction there's a steel tube runs sort of from the, the headstock down to um, where the engine mounts and then the rest of it is pressed steel and welded and uh, some of the components uh, like the leg shield the leg shield is just plastic lots of lightweight components on it and it's better for it because <laughs> you know when you're shuffling this round in the garage you just lift the back end up and shuffle it where you want it to now one thing I would say is it's pretty small I'll put your picture up of me riding it now it's, it's not a big bike <laughs> so if you're uh, if you're six foot like me you look like you've borrowed a child's motorbike but actually once you're on it it's got this double width seat on it so you, obviously you can carry a pillion on it I don't know what it'd be like with a pillion on <laughs> there's a few hills I'd avoid if I took a pillion out on this but actually this is pretty comfy to be fair I only picked it up yesterday so this is my first proper ride out on it really it's one of the things you get is you get a lot of smiles from people on this it puffs away very quietly, it doesn't upset horses like the old AGS does, apart from when it backfires occasionally like that. But on the whole, you get really positive reactions from people on this. Um, yesterday after I picked it up, uh, I got behind an old Mini, and it was something like a 77 or a 78 registered Mini. Lovely one, been restored. Mini 850 in brown, absolutely immaculate. And I followed it for about five miles. And it felt like I'd been transported right back to 1985. Because every other car in those days was a Mini. Or a Mark II Escort. And every other motorbike was a C90. So what's it like to ride? Well bit of a new experience for me really, there's no clutch, there's, there's no clutch, every time I set off I go for the imaginary clutch, um, actually that's that's wrong, there, there, there is a clutch, it's an automatic clutch, it's not a manual clutch, um, so it has a what's called a centrifugal clutch in it, so when the engine is ticking over the clutch is disengaged in theory, and as soon as the revs rise the clutch expands and it can connect within the gearbox and you get drive so all you need to do is turn the throttle and the bike moves forward come to a stop and as the engine drops down to tick over again the clutch disengages so you can come to a stop in top gear fiddle, fiddle around <laughs> right me to death that lad then I got a wave though yeah, come to a stop, faff around and you can get it into your lower gear or you can get it into neutral it's got a three speed gearbox and uh, the gears are operated by the pedal on the left hand side first is one click down second is another click down third is another click down with your toe and then in theory You should be able to change down with your heel, but actually it's probably easier just to just to click it back with the toe. Um, and what I first tried to do, when I first rode this bike, what I tried to do was ride it quite gently, and I realised actually you can rev the nuts off this without doing it any harm. On the speedo, there's a little green area with one, two, and three on it, which shows the speed ranges for the different gears. And if you, if you rev it right up to 30 miles an hour in second gear, this, this thing is buzzing. 
<laughs> but that lack of weight means that at these sort of speeds, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles an hour, it's it's a real pleasure. We stuck some new tyres on it. Um, Bob, I brought the bike off, put a new front tyre on it for the MLT. I changed the rear tyre because the, the rear tyre that was on it was a little bit too wide. And when Bob had been riding it with some luggage on, luggage, with a bag on, <laughs> it, had been, um, it had been rubbing the tyre a little bit because it was compressing out. So I weigh probably at least twice as much as Bob does, so I thought I'd better, uh, better put a narrow rear tyre on it so it's not rubbing on the bodywork. Um, and on those new tyres, it's so nimble, honestly, it's, it's so easy to do this stuff. <laughs> and just squirt around these little lanes. The brakes are not the best, let's be honest. The back brake actually is much better than the front brake is. The front brake just suggests that it's slowing down. The back brake actually slows it quite a bit. Let's go down to first here. Oh no, wrong junction. <laughs> That's the one I want. Yeah, the brakes are uh, the brakes are pretty poor, but the back one actually is much better than the front one. Uh, but if you look at you know good distance in front, you plan your journey, you spot things as they're happening, then you can stop in plenty of time. I wouldn't like to rely on an emergency stop on this thing. Uh, but it's only got little drum brakes on it, so you can't expect much more than that. Um, I found the gearbox really, really clunky at first, a little bit agricultural, but actually as I've, as I've got, I've done a few miles on it and got used to it a little bit, I've found that there's a, a couple of little techniques on it. When you're changing up through the gearbox, when you're accelerating, you're better off not completely lifting off or rolling off the accelerator. Uh, the best technique, and I'll show you now, if I change down to, just slow down and change down to second gear. So the best technique in changing up through gearbox is to do it as you're rolling off the gas. So you accelerate, accelerate, build speed, and as you're rolling off the gas, just click it in and it clicks in really nice and smoothly. Just as you roll the gas off. Uh, changing down through the gearbox, still practicing that really, because you can't really match the revs for the next gear. I suppose you could try. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's the first time I've tried it match the revs for the next gear down and it seems to work quite nicely. Uh, the ride is a lot more comfortable than I was expecting it to be, although these rear shocks, they're probably on the way out really, these rear shocks, so I have bought some new ones. Oh look at that, lovely, that's the first time I've changed gear smoothly in this, down through the gearbox. Join me on my journey of learning <laughs> about the C90. <laughs> yeah, so the rear shocks, I bought some new ones. Again, Bob, I bought the bike off, was suggesting they're a little bit soft. And that was part of the reason that the um, that the tyre had been rubbing. So I bought some shock absorbers off a of CG125, which fit directly onto this. Um, they don't quite fit because it's got a luggage rack that fouls on them a little bit. Oh, I want to go on that. Um, but that just needs a little bit fouling off it and then we'll fit those rear shocks on it. This bike will do between 100 and 110 miles to the gallon. It's got a fuel gauge. Uh, <laughs> It doesn't really tell the truth. Uh, I filled it up yesterday and it dropped down to red and I went to fill it up and I could not get five pounds worth of petrol in it. I don't know how much five pounds worth of petrol is these days. Not more than a couple of litres or so, is it? There was plenty left in it, so I think the trick is just... Just have a look in the tank every time you set off old school. Or just keep it full. I'm advised that it doesn't run very well on E10 petrol. Um, 
Now I put a bit of E10 in it yesterday and it ran all right, but um, I'll, I'll just fill it up with Super in future. Get that extra performance as well, <laughs> don't you, with Super? Oh, you join me as I learn to use this gearbox smoothly. I'm delighted with that. <coughs> now, I did have a little issue, and you can just hear that little backfire there. <coughs> I did have a little issue with it when I brought it home yesterday. Uh, one of the exhaust studs on the uh, cylinder head is missing. And the other one worked itself loose. And the exhaust detached itself from the uh, from the cylinder head. The exhaust stayed where it was, it just detached itself from the cylinder head. So I did a temporary fix, I found a nut and bolt that fitted, it seems to have held for now. Just been for some Loctite, keep it tight and I've ordered some new studs from eBay which will be in a couple of days, so that'll be sorted. Parts wise, never want anything like it for parts, you can get everything for these. And almost every part that you want to buy for one of these is 30 quid. You don't need to ask what the price is. It's 30 quid. So the shock absorbers I bought for this were 30 quid. I bought a new tyre and it was 30 quid. I might get some new leg shields just to spruce it up a bit. But... Uh, if I do, it's 30 quid. <laughs> so it's not going to break the bank. The only thing that wasn't 30 quid was the car tax, or the road tax. That was £21, and a year's insurance was £79. There's quite a bit of fun to be had on this bike, for a small outlay. just hear it backfiring a little bit. I haven't quite got the exhaust connected properly. There's a little bit of a gap and it just blows back a little bit every now and again. But it's the sort of noise a bike like this should make, isn't it? Oh. They ran around with my left indicator on for about the last two miles. Actually, do you know what? Cornering-wise, at these sort of speeds, this thing is fun. And once you wind it up, it's a happy little bike. We're about 50 miles an hour flat out at the moment, this thing. You can upgrade the engine on these. That costs a little bit more than 30 quid. A brand new Chinese 110cc engine and gearbox for one of these. It's 230 pounds. 30 pounds of being it somewhere, you knew that. But it's 230 quid. So I don't know, I might do that at some point in the future. Not in a rushed upgrade at the moment. I haven't quite sussed out coming to a stop at junctions yet. So you can leave it in gear. And just come to a stop. I'm tending to change down through the gears on the way to a junction. Just to have it ready to go. And that works for me. Occasionally it stalls. And then uh, you can't kick start it in gear, you've got to find neutral. So there's a little bit of faffing sometimes. It usually stalls when I'm turning right, you know, when you really don't want it to. That's what it tends to do. So I've got a stop sign here, I'm going to turn right. I'll just change down a couple of gears and keep a little bit of revs on. Got to stop. Switch off the signal, but on the whole, I'm, I'm pretty delighted with my little C90. It fills a little gap in the garage, fills a little gap in my motorcycle collection, which I think is, um... yeah, don't tell Mrs. Local, I'm not going to buy any more now, I don't think, I've no, 
a little bit of room left in the garage but between you and me I'm not going to get another one I keep winding her up then we'll get another one but I'm, I'm not so one of the plans with this bike well like I said before it's had a bit of a rattle campaign job I don't intend to change that um, that's sort of in keeping with the bike this is not a minter or a collector's item it's one for riding uh, my mate Daft Andy and I have some plans to do some sort of mini tours on these bikes he's got one a um, couple of friends who've got one as well so in a few weeks time we're going to do a bit of a tour of Wales over a weekend on the C90s which should be great fun so we can sort of do these little mini tours that don't cover huge distances <laughs> which I'm really looking forward to should we go from that I will film those and I'll share them with you those lights going to carry oh it's going to stay green for me oh those gear changes are so smooth now thanks YouTube you helped me fix them not quite confident enough to filter yet So we'll go with the traffic. <laughs> I can see why these are so popular in the popular in the 70s and 80s. You know, if you're a working man, bit of an amber gamble. If you're a working man and you want cheap transport that's reliable, cheap to run, cheap to fix. Perfect if he's just getting you to and from work. Perfect for that. Actually, they seem to be in a little bit collectible now. There's still loads of them about. Um, the ones I've seen on eBay and other places, the you know, 2,000 quid, I haven't paid that for this one. Bobby's and his dad, he's done me a cracking deal on this bike, so I'm really pleased, really pleased with it. And you're going to be seeing a bit more of this, like I said, I'll be doing the tours. Little weekend tours on the C90s, a bit of fun. But at the same time, I'm going to be doing a new series of videos very soon, I'm going to start in the next few weeks and it's a series of videos about how to pass your advanced bike test now of course a lot of those I'll be doing on the GS but just to show that you don't need a big expensive bike to be an advanced rider I'll do some videos on this I'll do some on the old AGS and I'll do some on the Fireblade well, whatever's appropriate for the video that I'm making so if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel Or if I don't get wiped out by a Tesla before then, please subscribe to the channel. Click the notifications button so you get an email every time I upload a new video. And go have a look at the website as well. Loads more information there about advanced and performance driving and riding. Maybe low performance riding now as well. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you like my little C90. We'll see you next time. on the C90. Woohoo! <laughs>